that I am nothing but dust or something. I can't remember what verse it is. <laughs> well, we're nothing but dust, that's for sure. Basically. Oh, Hallelujah. I have a praise. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. I have a praise report. Okay, good. And a thanks to the Lord because I went out yesterday to the auditions that I did in 2017 that my voice teacher said, why not? Just go. Go sing again. Hallelujah. What, what, what can you lose? You're going to get more comments. You're going to get another chance, another 50 bucks. You might even win again. <laughs> Amen. And I worked like mad because the Lord chose a very hard aria from Handel, again, the one that's based on Romans, If God Be For Us, which is very difficult for me. And I went out there and I sang it. And they heard the French piece as well, which is another difficult one, but it's gorgeous. And uh, I won again. Hallelujah. And Amen. I got to, interestingly enough, yesterday was full of ironies and things. I got to leave a tract, a gospel tract in the ladies' room. And then since I won my division, that means you sing again later in the afternoon when they hand out the certificates and the little cash awards. You sing whatever your choice is in the recital. So I went out and I put that aria out again, difficult as it was, but I did it because I'm like, okay, the three judges heard it. One of them is a Christian, so the other two I have no clue. And then um, the audience heard it. That's and right, get the gospel out. <laughs> interestingly enough, a professor from FAU who once told me I would never get past a G on the scale. She heard me. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> that, was, that was one of the ironies. Amen. <laughs> the whole point was he chose the aria, and I said, okay, and I got it out there. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, yeah. I'd like you to open your Bibles to Psalm 33. Ah. Now, <clears throat> Last week I told you I was going to start a series on the second coming because I wanted all of you to be persuaded that that is true. That is not something Psalm that 33. is just going through the air. Amen. And then the Lord spoke to me this week and said, if they don't believe what I'm saying, they're not going to believe what, says, what the book says. That's right. And I'm taking you to the 23rd Psalm. Because the writer of this song, 33, 46, and I, I've captured <laughs> this song, a song of praise and rejoicing, but it's more than that. Sing joyfully to the Lord, you righteous. It is fitting for the upright to praise Him. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord with the harp. Make music to Him on the ten-string lyre. Sing to Him a new song. Sing skillfully and shout for joy. Now this is the verse I want you to mark. For the word of the Lord is right and true. Yes. All right? He is faithful in all he does. Yeah, hallelujah. The Lord loves righteousness and judgment. The, or the earth is full of his unfailing love. Okay, so in verse 4, you mark down, or you underline, the word of the Lord is right and true. Yes. He is faithful in all he does. And then the next line, verse 5, the Lord loves righteousness and just justice. The earth is full of his unfailing love. I want you to get that. Yes. The yes, earth indeed. is full of his unfailing love. Verse 6, by the word of the Lord were the heavens made. Now we're talking about a creative God. Okay? Yes. Here he is, creative. Mm -hmm. hmm. By the word of the Lord were the heavens made, their starry host by the breath of his mouth. He gathers the waters of the sea into jars. He puts the deep into storehouses. Let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all the people of the world 
revered him. Hallelujah. Now verse 9. For he spoke and it came to be. He commanded and it stayed firm. Now mark that word authoritative. Okay? He spoke and it came to be. He commanded and it stood firm. The Lord foils the plans of the nations. He thwarts the purposes of the people. Verse 11. But the plan are the plans of the Lord stand firm forever. Yes. Now get a hold of your book. This stands firm forever. Forever. It doesn't change no matter what goes on in our world. This stands firm forever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That speaks of his eternal. Yes. Hallelujah. The purposes of his heart through all generations. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. The people he chooses for his inheritance. Yes. For the heavens, from the heavens the Lord looks down and sees all mankind. From his dwelling place he watches all who live on earth. Okay? You know that tell you? Don't think you're getting away with anything. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> You get that verse? Amen. He sees everything. Everything. He, he watches all who live on earth. Hallelujah. He forms the hearts of all who consider everything they do. No king is saved by the size of his army. No warrior escapes by his great strength. A horse is a vain hope for deliverance. Despite all, despite all its great strength, it cannot save. But the eyes of the Lord are on those who fear Him, on those whose hope is in, the un, in His unfailing love to deliver them from death. Hallelujah. Now, the reason I chose this psalm is because if you really get it into your heart, you're going to discover so many things about God that aren't just things that we read as something that maybe, you know, God did this then, God did that. No. God doesn't change. Amen. He can't change. There's nothing He did that He cannot do. You follow me? Yes. And uh, the, the, <clears throat> the, 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 the psalmist here is, is wanting to make clear the, these statements about God. And I really believe that that's such an important thing because if you don't really believe that, if that doesn't really get your spirit, then my preaching to you about His eternal being the same, that He's coming one of these days, will mean nothing. In fact, what took place around the altar today will mean nothing to you. Unless you really believe that God is who he says he is and he will do what he says he will do. Hallelujah. You following me? Amen. Yes. All right. If you look at the wall I have up there, the psalmist discovered many things about God. This morning I want to make several things clear to everyone here. There seems to be many critical statements about God. I believe that is because people making them do not really know God. If you yes. don't know God, you're going to talk critically about Him. That's right. Because you don't know Him. Yep. It's like anybody else. If you criticize somebody, it's usually because you don't really know them. But if you really <laughs> knew them, you would get yes, beyond indeed. that point. This past week, a, a, a prophet, a man by the name of Mario Murillo, he was with us at Lighthouse several years ago and so on and since then he had settled in California and he spoke these words and I want you to get them in light of what I just read okay I'm walking the streets of San Francisco I snapped this picture and something blasted in my spirit quote 
all that can be shaken, unquote. God has made his choice. That's right. God has chosen his targets, targets and God will strike suddenly. Wow. Now, yes. I want you to keep that in mind because if you read the scripture carefully, that's what he's always done. That's yes, right. All yes. the pagan nations in the Old Testament that yep. rose up against right Israel, yep. they didn't last. And it didn't make any difference how prepared God they were. Them. Yep. Whether it was a, a young man who was afraid and, and he said, God, if you really mean it, then let this sponge be wet in the morning and everything around it dry. And God does that, and the next morning he says, now let the sponge be dry and everything around it wet. And God does it. Hmm. And, Amen. and so the, the young man goes out, and his name is Gideon. Hmm. And he goes out to battle, and he wins. Why? Because he proved that God right. keeps his word. Yes. And what I want you to understand is that it's so important that you believe what this says. It's yep. not something you just read and pass it over. It's something you have to get into your spirit in such a way that you realize that it, this God is a real and is real and alive today, and He's doing as He pleases in our world today. All right, do you understand me? Hallelujah. He spoke about the nation of Israel being resettled. Guess what happened? Yes, yes. All right? Hallelujah. It doesn't make any difference what the other nations of the world think or whatever. When God said it's going to happen, it's going to happen because God said it's going to happen. Yes. Amen. You follow me? Amen. And that's the important thing. He went on, goes on to say, to 2018, the year that everything that can be shaken will be shaken. And I don't know whether you've ever thought about that, but several times as I've been praying in my devotions, I have felt that God is going to shake everything that people think is eternal or permanent or it's going to last. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And they're going to discover, and I don't care whether oh, it's yes. finances, I don't care whether it's a government, whatever, it doesn't make any difference. God is going to shake things like they've never shaken. They say he's tried it already. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. That's for sure. Yes, sir. It goes on to say, you're, you companies who have your wealth and power to persecute the righteous will now be shaken. Yeah. Mm. You See politicians that. who have ruined America for decades will suddenly disappear. Yep. Now, it's happening right now. That's a big one. Yes, sir. But I want you to keep it in your mind. This is another one. You preachers who have handled the word of God deceitfully. Amen. And cheapened grace mm. to finance your private life. Ooh. Yep. All right. We'll have your gift removed in public humiliation. Wow. Amen. Now, it's very interesting because I don't know whether you caught it on television. But one gentleman who has been an evangelist was on television and he was bragging over the fact that he's worth about $90 million. <laughs> and he was talking about his $20 million jet. And he was talking, and the, what he was saying to the crowd, the peoples, were send me your January offerings, your money for your income for January, and from February on, you will be financially blessed. It wasn't, but the next day, I had television on, not for any special purpose. And a lady who now resides in Washington went public with the same statement, saying to, to people who were watching her, send me your January income. And from February on, you will be blessed financially like you have never been blessed. Mm -hmm. Wow. And, and I thought, wait a minute now. That's not God. That's no. right. That's green. God is the one who says, bring me your tithes and your offerings. Bring these things into my storehouse. That's what God is saying. He's not saying, make that person rich. Yep. All right? 
Now, what, what I'm getting at is I want you to understand that not everybody who calls himself a preacher or a person who represents God is really that. That's right. That's right? right. Listen to this. Snakes in the garden. God shook himself. He waited. He was patient. He gave you time to play church. He let you have your blessed your toys. He looked away in hope he would come to he looked away in hope that we would come to ourselves. His blessing and his goodness did not bring you to repentance. No. It became a license to you to go deeper into counterfeit Christianity. That's right. Mm. Yep. Counterfeit. Counterfeit. Christianity. counterfeit. Yes. I want you to get that. Amen. Because not everything out there is true Christianity. That's right. That's true. Unfortunately, and I mean that, unfortunately, there are those who in the past may have been genuine and honest, who today are not. Then he goes on to say, the American church is guilty of great crimes against the Holy Spirit. We hold him, the Holy Spirit, to leave and let us grow Christianity Incorporated, the worst things we could have done. Yes. It was a mistake, a terrible, incalculable, ongoing mistake, derailing more truth in less time than any mortal plague in history. Amen. What he's talking about is what has happened to the church. Yes. yes. And I was shocked, mm. some of it I shared with you last week, of the number of churches that no longer preach the second coming. There are, in fact, I read it the, in, an art, in this gentleman's article, I have it on my desk, for those of you who may want it. I'll give you a copy of it. <clears throat> but he was the head of one of the do leading Protestant denominations in America, in fact, in the world. And you know what he said? His heart was broken because he said, no longer do they talk about the second coming of Jesus. No longer do they encourage people to be living in anticipation of his second coming. That they have completely pushed yes, it aside. Yes, yes. Friends, listen to me. So often, too often, what has gone on in the American church, and I say the American church, because when I get reports from places like Iran, where God is moving in a mighty way, and the number of peoples that are getting saved and brought Amen. in, and, and I read these other reports, and you realize that all over the world God is moving by His Holy Spirit and people are being saved and coming into the kingdom. And in America, in America, we're finding what has happened here. Churches get empty. Yes. Why? Because they've stopped being what they're supposed to be. He puts it this way. It was a mistake, a terrible, incalculable, ongoing mistake. Derailing more truth and less time than any moral plague in history. Wow. He goes on to say, why, we, why, why, why did we stand by and watch America change overnight? Why were we helpless to intervene when our nation began hating everything? That made it great. Yes. And I'm serious. Mm. If you read back over some of the personal lives of our presidents and our leaders, they had a, an experience and a relationship with God that unfortunately no longer do we have in America in that level. Now, he goes on to make this statement. Trump was only the beginning of his shaking. And he speaks of Trump now. He is rude. He is offensive by design. His words uproot and tear down. He is a wrecking ball to international corruption. His crudeness is a tool of, 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 a, of God with a plan. He makes you queasy. He scares you. That's nothing. Just wait till they try to get him out of power. Oh, how his enemies 
rejoice thinking that they have nailed him as a racist. They will fail for two simple reasons. He's not a racist, and he is in power for a divine reason. Amen. Watch the most powerful people attack and grumble. Watch liberal heads explode. Yeah. Why now, you ask? Why has God rolled up his sleeve to root up false ministries? Why is he accelerating his earthquakes? I asked. The answer was stunning, but not surprising. We are at the moment when Google, Facebook, Apple, Twitter, along with leftist leaders, will unfurl a cyber iron curtain. Christians will be marginalized. Values that, sh that violate our constitution and freedom of religion will be enforced. Bible preaching will be a hate crime. Yep. Hmm. Arnold ministers were toadies in this plan to drive the church underground and to terrorize Israel. God sees the coming midterm elections without a miracle by November. He goes on to talk about who might be re-elected. We are only months away from a leftist backlash that will transcend anything in our history. God came to the inescapable decision that rival, revival, excuse me, must come now or the nation is lost. He will pour out wrath, but he is also, he will also pour out his spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look, Thank you. For despised little churches, faithfully preaching the word of God, to become centers of glory, miracles, and mass con conversions. Hallelujah. Look for nobodies to come on the scene like a righteous tornado and roar repentance with such power that their voices will echo in the penthouses of power. Yes. Look for cam campus ministries to rise because millennials will see the blatant persecution and turn Christianity into a celebrated cause. Yes. Look for preaching to be matched with miracles. Confirmation of the word, capital, big letters, word. Yes. By medically inexplic inexplicable th happenings. Look for God to pull out all the stops. Look for every ministry fueled by man to fall by the wayside. To make room for the voices that cannot be shaken. Hallelujah. Writing this blog brought me great turmoil until something happened that moved all doubt. I walked the streets of San Francisco, fighting an inner war. Suddenly, my cell phone rang. It was a good friend. He asked me, what is God telling you about 2018? Before I could answer him, he said, God showed me it'll be a year where everything that can be shaken will be shaken. Hallelujah. Now, why did I take time to read that to you? Because I want you to get it in your heads and in your hearts. I want you to understand that what God has spoken in this book yes. is eternal. It's, kind of it's Hallelujah. going to happen. It's going to happen. Because he wrote it. He That's spoke right. it. It's not just something that's ink on paper. You have to get the understanding in your spirit that he's a creative God. There's nothing he cannot do. Yeah, that's right. He is a creative God. He can speak anything he wants into existence. I mean, look at our country now. We've had the worst winter in the history. How many of our states have been terribly blighted by snow and, and freezing temperatures and and people suffering because of it. Yes. And how many in California because of the mudslides now yes. are, have no place to live. They've gone through fires, they've gone through, and then the heavy rains and now the mudslides. And where do they go? Because I want you to understand that when God says he's going to do things, he's going to do things. And I believe that what he's doing to America is to wake America up. Yes. Especially those who are him. supposed to be Christians who sit in church. Yes. Whether or, to whether or not you're really going to believe what God says. Yes. Because right. not only is he creative, 
He's all authority. There is no other authority than the authority of God. Hallelujah. I mean, he holds the whole world in the hollow of his hand. There is nothing that he cannot do any place in our world. And I don't care what the leader of North Korea talks or says or anybody else. God's in charge of what's going on in, our, in the world. And he's going to be in charge. Because he's God. Hallelujah. Thank and we you. have to go back to the understanding that he created the world. He created everything in it. Everything. And all of you are alive because he wants you to be alive. Thank you, Jesus. And if he didn't want you to be alive, you wouldn't be. <laughs> Amen. And the talents and the gifts you have are things he gave you. Not something you were just born with. He gave them to you. He gave you the ability to, to, to think, to do as, as he wants you to. Because he's God. Hallelujah. And, and, and again, the fourth thing, that, thing that I want you to get here is God is eternal. There is nothing about God that is limited. He was before the worlds were created. He created them. He's going to be there until everything comes to an end. But you've got to get it in your head. America will only last as long as God wants America to last. I mean, he, he made America a privileged country because of the Christians that founded our nation. Yes. Amen. The people he sent here at the beginning wanted a Christian country, a place where they could preach the gospel freely. Yes. And now, we've reached a place in America where that's not true anymore. That's Amen. really not true. That's true. And you parents with children, as, you go, as they go to school, you need to be careful because now even schools, and what's, what I'm discovering just this past week, a classmate of a, of a Christian kid who was raised in church and, and just happened to speak that way, a classmate complained to the principal and that child was put out of that school. Now, what am I getting at? I just want you to understand yeah. that the devil wants America to go its way and God is saying, play your game. You're not going to go very long. Amen. Because I'm in charge. That's right. We sang it this morning. That's right. In, in, in the songs that Christina had us sing. Yes. All right? We, we right. Sang, sang the fact that, that he's all powerful. He's the resurrected one. He's the one. And what God is saying to the church is, church, wake up to who I am. Amen. Quit giving in to what the world wants. That's right. Quit behaving like the world wants. Yes. And get your focus on God and obey what God wants. You follow me? Hallelujah. That's yes. what God is saying. Yes. You know, there was a day when revivals were advertised publicly, big signs and all kinds of signs like that all over the place were advertising revivals. Now you don't put a sign out anywhere about a revival. Yeah. Yep, so true. God is saying, hey, just remember, just remember, I'm an eternal God. Hallelujah. I don't have a time limit on my life. <laughs> but I set time limits for what I will allow. That's right. What I will allow. Tolerate only so much. You know, right now, there is such a move of God in the continent of Africa. I mean, such a powerful move of God. Yes. Uh, some of you know that Mary Tome went there. And in the, the country where she went, the, one of the, the missionaries there had become a, aware of the Esther Network ministry and what it was and so on. And he wanted it in, in his community. So she went down there, and God used her in such a way that not only did the churches respond, but the government responded. Hallelujah. They've even gone so far, listen to this, they're na naming 